Hi, I'm Arya Sharma. I'm the scientific director of the Canadian Obesity Network, but I'm also a practicing physician uh, who runs uh, a, a large bariatric center where we see a lot of patients coming to us uh, with weight-related health issues. I also give a lot of talks to health professionals, and one of the most common comments that I hear is that people simply don't have time in their regular practice to deal with obesity because it seems to be such a complex problem. So here are my 10 uh, do's and don'ts for managing obesity that are not going to cost you a lot of time, but I think will have a great impact on the health of your patients. So let's first of all start with rule number one. Do not blame, threaten, or pressure your patient. That is not constructive. Shame and blame does not work. Your patient knows that they're overweight. Uh, they know that this is a problem. If there was a simple solution, they'd already be doing it. And in fact, many of them will have lost weight in the past. And so have that understanding that this is not an easy problem to deal with and understand uh, that there are no simple solutions and this is going to be very difficult. Uh, second rule, do not suggest or recommend or support unrealistic goals and targets. Uh, patients might come in highly motivated, they want to lose half their body weight uh, by next month. That's not going to happen, it's not the right way to do this. Um, Patients are going to be disappointed and very often patients who are looking for rapid weight loss are ready to do things that are simply not sustainable and the whole point of obesity management is not how much weight can I lose and how fast can I lose it. The whole point is how much weight can I keep off and unfortunately the, the methods that people engage in to try and lose as much weight as possible as quickly as possible are generally not sustainable which means that the weight is coming back. The good news here is that for a lot of people even just stopping to gain weight is success. That's a realistic goal. You know, come back in a year and have not have gained weight, for a lot of people, can be a very realistic goal that is achievable. If there are health problems, losing 5% or maybe even 10% is very doable and very sustainable for most people. When you start talking about losing 20% of your body weight or 30% of your body weight, that's when things become very difficult and you are going to have to start seriously considering things like bariatric surgery or becoming a marathon runner if that's going to work. And for most people, that's not realistic. So rule number three, obesity is a chronic condition. It's complicated. Anyone living with a condition that's complicated and that is lifelong has to learn about that condition. And so you need to educate your patient or make sure that your patient has that education, that information that is going to be helpful to them for managing their weight in the long term. And we do this for all conditions. When people have depression, we talk about psychoeducation. When people have diabetes, we send them to see the diabetes educator so that they learn about their disease, they learn about the complications, they learn about the best ways to manage. Patients with obesity need to learn about their condition. In fact, they need to become experts on this condition and you need to help them get there and get them to realize that this is a chronic condition that is going to leave, uh, that they are going to be living with, whether they lose weight or not, even if they lose weight, that's not curing obesity. That is just successful treatment that has to be continued for the weight not to come back. So rule, rule number four, a lot of people overeat because they're not eating regularly. These people do not have eating disorders. They have disordered eating. People don't have breakfast. They skip lunch. They come home in the evening. They're starving. They have what we call homeostatic hyperphagia, which means overeating because of hunger. That is relatively easy to fix. I tell a lot of patients, do not eat when you're hungry, which means never allow yourself to get hungry so that you lose control over your food intake. Rule number four, encourage your patients to eat regularly. Start the day with a breakfast. If you're not having breakfast, weight management is going to be difficult. And this also means that you might want to self-monitor this. This is something we do for every chronic disease. But for people who have diabetes, we ask them to record and monitor their blood sugars. For people who have high blood pressure, we ask them to measure their blood pressure and keep records. For patients who have asthma, we ask them to keep a log of their peak flow values. Well, the same applies to obesity. Self-monitoring is key. Uh, keep a food diary, record your activity levels, and if you are an emotional eater, note down those emotions. Try to understand, I'm having a bad day, what is it on that day that actually made me overeat? And try to understand that and keep records of that. So number four, encourage your patient to eat regularly and to self-monitor. Rule number five, you need to understand uh, the calories. And this is not counting calories. This is understanding that calories count. So a patient who has to deal with obesity needs to have some level of understanding of what are calories, how many calories do I need, where are those calories coming from, uh, can I afford to have this, can I not afford to have this, and then they can make informed choices. 
if you have a calorie allowance per day of say 16 or 17 or 2,000 calories, well, you can make a choice about what, how are you going to have those calories. Do you want to have that specialty coffee that's 500 calories, yes or no? Well, you can make that informed choice once you actually understand the concept of calories. So this is about teaching about the importance of calories. Uh, in this context, of course, uh, teaching uh, your patient to understand nutrition labels. What does that number of calories on the can or what does that calorie number on the food label actually mean? Patients need to understand that because calories in the end are the currency of weight management. Rule number six, one of the easiest things that anybody can do to manage the weight is to avoid liquid calories. The problem with liquid calories is they're very easy to consume. You can very quickly uh, drink calories, large amounts of calories. Uh, and unfortunately, most liquid calories are not going to have an impact on satiety, which means you're going to drink all of these calories and you'll still be hungry and you'll still not feel full, which means that you're still going to eat those extra calories on top of everything. And so getting rid of liquid calories, and that is relatively simple. Find out, are your patients drinking their calories? If they are, that needs to stop. So that includes definitely sweetened beverages. Uh, it also includes alcohol, and it also includes uh, you know, milk that may, may be sweetened, like chocolate milk, for example. Uh, regular milk, there might be an advantage of drinking that because there's a lot of protein in there and people have problems often getting their protein and protein has a satiety effect. But if you're talking about sugar sweetened beverages, if you're talking about alcohol, lots of calories, not a lot of nutritional value, if any, and you need to know that and you need to be aware of that. And my advice to a lot of patients is cut them out. Number eight, self-monitoring is important, but having patients come in, for example, for a weigh-in is as important. A lot of weight management programs have shown that if you can bring the patient, it's the, it's the number of times that you see the patient, it's, it's the number of contacts with the patients, the ongoing uh, support that these patients get is so important. And so, for example, simply offering your patients that they can come in once a month uh, to get on the scale and you record their body weight in their chart, you don't even have to see them, they just walk in, they get on the scale, you record the weight and that's it has such an impact because for a lot of patients, it is that external control or the sense that they're having that external control that so much better helps them manage the weight. And it doesn't cost anything, it doesn't take time, it just needs to be done. Rule number nine, do not stop any of the above when the patient has lost weight. Losing weight is not a cure for obesity. It is just the first sign that your treatment seems to be working. Unfortunately, weight management is like pulling on a string. If this is your weight, you're pulling on the string here. So I do my exercise, I do my diet, uh, you know, maybe I try to get more sleep. You start not doing any of those things, your weight starts coming back. I stop my exercise, I stop my food diary, I stop wearing my pedometer and my weight is back to where it was before. Anything you do to lose weight is exactly what you need to keep doing to keep the weight off. Any relaxation there means weight is coming back. Think of it as pulling on a rubber band. Obviously the more you pull, the easier it is for that rubber band to snap back. And that is why pulling on that rubber band too much means that many people are not going to be able to sustain that. And that comes back to realistic goals. So the point here is don't stop whatever it is that, you, that your patient was doing or whatever you were doing with the patient in order to help them lose the weight because they need to continue this for life. And that's why the education is so important. They need to understand this is a chronic lifelong condition that they need to manage. And you can't relax that management you are never cured of your obesity. And finally, because it is a chronic condition and because it is a condition that is lifelong and where relapse rates are so high, which means that patients, even if they have successfully lost weight, will see those pounds creeping back over time. That is not, some, that is not failure. That is the natural progress of a chronic relapsing condition. You need to prepare your patients for this. When they come back and have regained some of that weight, they're going to be very frustrated, very disappointed. They're going to feel like failures. You need to encourage them, say, well, that's completely natural. In fact, that's what we expect. It just shows we have to go back and start doing some of those things again. It means you've relaxed that pull on the rubber band. You need to start uh, you know, pulling a little bit more again, just in order to stay where you are. Those are 10 things that I think every family physician, every health practitioner can very quickly do uh, with their patient, it does not cost anything except time and interest uh, in order to do this. Uh, obviously, 
There will be more complicated patients, and obviously the more time and the more knowledge you can give your patient, the better. Uh, but in the end, these 10 rules, I think, will make a difference. And remember, if you have time for nothing else, follow rule number one. Do not blame, threaten, or pressure your patients to lose weight. That is not